here I go again making controversy I know these videos get a lot of people angry but I think I need to do it it's an important subject so here we go again the clash of titans chapter 2 AutoCAD versus Revit and potatoes are the key So you know what's the basic difference between AutoCAD and Revit? It's the difference between a knife and a potato peeler. Yes, a knife will peel a potato. It will also cut the meat, it will cut the rope, and occasionally it will bring mayhem to your enemies. On the other hand, a potato peeler will not cut the potato, it won't cut the rope, and it's pretty useless as far as self-defense goes. But it will do one hell of a job when it comes to peeling potatoes. It will make it fun, enjoyable, and you'll just ask yourself why haven't you started using it a lot earlier. So, before this becomes a late-night infomercial about potato peelers, what I'm trying to say is that AutoCAD is basically a general-purpose general drafting software that a whole host of engineers use and architects, structural engineers or MEP specialists are just one of those engineers that use this tool. So, what I'm trying to say is that AutoCAD is basically a knife. On the other hand of this potato peeling dichotomy, we have a potato peeler. I mean Revit. We've got Revit. Okay, this is getting quite confusing. Okay, so Revit is basically a purpose-built tool for creating project documentation necessary for a building to be built. Because of this, Revit works much better as a tool for producing project documentation. Uh, AutoCAD basically works with vectors, which is a fancy way of saying lines, and these lines are really dumb. Well, they're not dumb, but they're not smart geometry. They're just dead geometry, and on the other hand, what Revit uses is smart geometry. Elements used in Revit are uh, kind of created to uh, mimic real-life uh, building elements. So what does this all mean? Well, let's look for just a basic example. Let's look at the wall as it is the most basic uh, element in building construction. In AutoCAD you would first need to kind of put some lines to create a boundary of this wall, then you would need to add some additional lines just to represent all of the layers of the wall and you would have to add probably some hatches to represent the materials used, but that's not enough. Then you would have to kind of copy this around all over your building. And then that's just the beginning of the story, that's just the graphical part. You would need somebody to come in and calculate all of the areas of the wall if you want to paint it or just to calculate uh, all, all of the paint materials and other materials. You would need to calculate the volume of the wall so you would know how much brick you're going to be using for it. You would need somebody to create all of the Excel spreadsheets and calculate all of the weights of different uh, segments of this wall that you have. Then you need to import it in some structural, uh, structural calculation program and you would need to have somebody calculate all of the structural uh, tensions inside of this wall. So basically at the end of the day you have just a bunch of different uh, documents, a bunch of different files in different versions of, of files that are that are really not connected in any way. They're not linked up. They should be linked up, they should work together, but they're not. So whenever you decide to create a change in the project, you basically want to move some wall, make it shorter perhaps, somebody needs to physically go in and update all of the Excel spreadsheets and then update all of the structural uh, structural analysis. So basically this is very prone to user error or human error. On the other hand, Revit works much more efficiently. So basically in Revit you need to create a new wall type and this is where you place all of the materials which basically add up to all of the layers of the wall then you just uh, say how much these materials will cost what's their weight what are their thermal efficiency what is their thermal efficiency and you're pretty much done you just need to pick two points on your drawing and just place that wall and whenever you change that wall 
all of the information on all of your calculations as far as building costs, uh, thermal efficiency analysis, structural analysis, everything will automatically update because everything is linked up because it's in one file. So you're just working with one singular file that holds all of this different kinds of information, or, uh, even the, the graphical information, both the graphical information and uh, all of the information as far as calculations and all of the text and, and all of that stuff, basically non-graphical information. So when you're working in Revit, unless you made some initial mistakes while just inserting data into the, that single wall type, you really have no chance for user error. Nobody needs to update all of the different files. Everything is inside of one file, so there's no possibility for human error. And buildings aren't just built by architects. They're not really just designed by architects. They're built by a whole host of different uh, professions. So you've got your architects, you've got your structural engineers, you've got somebody who to, that does all the thermal analysis, uh, you've got somebody for a, an MEP specialist perhaps, and a bunch of different professions. So you're always working with a bunch of different people and Revit allows everybody to work inside of a same file. So this again eliminates chance for user error and also eliminates a chance for clashes so whenever you're building a building and you're just designing it in AutoCAD usually you would have some templates that you kind of share around to all of the engineers working on this building and then uh, there's a possibility that uh, they might place something, uh, maybe an electrical engineer and an MEP specialist places a something in the same place and then if they don't figure it out before building is be, starts being built, they're going to get a situation where on the job site they're going to have a clash and then they need to fix it fix it and it costs a lot more to fix something when you've already started building the building than in the initial like design phases. And as far as all of this teamwork goes, AutoCAD only allows one person to work in one DWG file at a time, wherein Revit allows multiple users to use the same file at the same time, so it's a lot more efficient. So you're probably asking yourself, why doesn't everybody just learn Revit immediately? Why do, does anybody learn AutoCAD in the first place? Well, uh, Revit is a very complex software, so you need a long, long time to really understand it and learn it. So when people are just in school, for most of the school work, you don't really need to use all of the Revit's features. You're probably only using like 10 or 20%. So for most people, it just makes more sense to use AutoCAD at that time. But then when they finish school, they quickly start realizing that all of the other 80% of Revit's features are actually quite useful in the real world and that's when people really start getting into Revit and start learning it. At the end of the day, I'm not really saying that AutoCAD is a bad software. I'm just saying when it comes to a building design and getting just all of the project documentation for buildings, Revit works much more efficiently and that doesn't mean that AutoCAD is a useless piece of software It's actually an amazing software and a lot of different professions use it and It will stay alive for a long long time and it will be used for a long long time because it's just so versatile And just anybody who needs any technical documentation or graphic technical drawings will need to use AutoCAD and AutoCAD is simple enough for anybody to learn it in quite a quick time. So I suggest you learn it even if you don't plan on using it all the time or <laughs> any time. But you really need to know it because a lot of uh, a lot of experts still use AutoCAD mostly. So in order to be able to collaborate with those people, you would need to have some basic understanding of how AutoCAD works. And it's quite simple to use, so there's really no excuse for not learning it. Okay, but anyway, that's pretty much it for this video about Revit versus AutoCAD. And please tell me in the comment section below, do you use just Revit or just AutoCAD or do you use sometimes one program, sometimes the other one? Just tell me what are your thoughts on the subject, on the subject and am I completely wrong or am I right on some things? Just tell me in the comment section below and please like this video, share it with your friends that are still using AutoCAD and refuse to start learning Revit. And 
Also, please subscribe. I make tutorials on Revit every day or on similar software, so it's quite useful if you want to learn anything about architectural software. And follow me on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I will be posting there every day, so make sure to, to add me on there as well. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow.